Hey everybody, welcome back to I Have a Point for That. This is Dr. Jordan Edders here. Um, I am outside. It is a nice day, so you might hear little, you know, dogs, um, children. Um, the weather is really nice. The sun actually came out. Um, it's about five something p.m. today. And um, today it was mostly like rainy and um, kind of you know humid muggy but it was like a good little breeze so it's a really good um you know it feels really good out here it's about 60 65 or 68 I don't know 70 degrees right now so anyway so I did not get to a chance to talk to y'all yesterday on Friday and um, I wanted to just kind of make up for that time and talk to y'all about the four phases of the menstrual cycle because I um, asked y'all a question on Instagram and uh, I, I said um, do you know the four phases of the menstrual cycle and I had a hundred percent say no I don't know what that's about so we need to fix that but I have my um, textbook here so I'm really like you know I want to dig in with y'all um, so this is the book this is one of the books that I use um, to kind of make sure that I'm on the right track with um, you know this is something that helped me learn how to really help um, women uh, do women's health and things like that from a, a Chinese medicine and acupuncture perspective so I'm going to disclaimer I am going to be using some traditional Chinese medicine terminology I will back it up and translate it for you guys okay so just hang with me okay just stick with me and my dog is coming through hey Sadie come here anyway <laughs> uh, she just came through the net I have the door open anyway so let's start so there are four phases to your menstrual cycle so there's of course the uh first part of it where you bleed that's you know day one first day when you, of your bleeding day that's the first day of your cycle and you count those many days until the next time you start bleeding okay so that's we're talking the whole thing okay not just the days that you bleed okay so you have the bleeding phase you have a follicular ovulation and luteal phase okay again <laughs> you have your bleeding follicular ovula ovulation or ovulatory and the luteal phase those are your four phases of the menstrual cycle this is a very intricate very um uh harmonized synchronized situation it's levels to this it's phases to this and it's a beautiful process if you actually um if you actually experience it for what it is we don't talk about it much a lot of the times we just talk about just the bleeding part and you know most of the time nobody ever has anything good to say about that so let's get let's let's bring back the um let's bring back the womanhood in this you know let's bring back the the femininity of actually having a a complete menstrual cycle and actually experiencing it for what it is and it can be actually a very beautiful process of course if you're not in pain uh in the beginning of it so let's get to it i like i said i have my notes here i got my book here i just want to keep us on track so you know you know i know what y'all are doing I, I know it's saturday you know i have stuff to do too so you know um so menstrual phase that is you know that's the time where hopefully you are bleeding no more than you know five days um sometimes people go to six usually it's you know pretty tapered off so hopefully you're not doing like 10 you know 12 14 days you know we're not hopefully we're not doing that okay hopefully you're not ble bleeding heavily either but if you are i can help you anyway um so like i said i'm going to be using the chinese medicine terminology first and then I'll, I'll i'll help you out clear it up okay this is the phase the blood is moving you got that you got that uh this relies on the free flow of liver chi and liver blood I'm gonna fix it for you okay this in western terminology means that there is a sharp fall in estrogen and progesterone levels and that is where the endometrial lining is starting to basically die off because it did not have use 
it did not need to be used for pregnancy because the pregnancy did not occur because there of course everything it, nothing's being used the um egg did not get fertilized so we don't need the endometrial lining the endometrial lining is the part that's aligning your uterus and that's what gives the blood the good supply of blood to a developing embryo and eventually a developing fetus and eventually a healthy baby okay so that is all of that stuff is coming out that's a good thing that's when your body's saying okay let's clean house um we had um you know nothing happened this month we're gonna keep it moving thank you and goodbye so next we have the uh follicular phase so after you've bled after your body is cleaned it out now this is a building up phase so now it's time to build things up, get things prepared in case you actually do want to get pregnant this cycle, okay? If you don't, don't do it. <laughs> so uh, during this phase, the blood and yin are, they're, 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 they need to be built up because we've used, we've gotten out all the old stuff. So now this is where things are starting. We need to work on building that up. When I say yin, that is like the fluid part. That is the part that you will start to see more of in the ovulation phase when you when we think about the cervical mucus, the cervical fluid that needs to be there when you if you do plan on getting pregnant that um, helps carry the sperm into the uh, to meet the with, with the egg. OK, so just, you know the yin part is that creating that really healthy environment and that healthy ph and all of that healthy moist area that is hospitable for sperm and to meet the egg and for eventually the development of the embryo okay so that part okay now okay let's say i don't want it let's say if somebody says well i'm not looking to get pregnant so i don't even want that to happen well okay i'll say this if you if this is happening to you and you're seeing that good quality cervical fluid and things are looking good then you know okay this is a time where i do not need to um participate in those types of activities or i need to use another form of protection okay so that's where that comes in now and from a um, Western medicine perspective, this is where the follicle grows. So that's the part that's gonna be holding your egg. Estrogen levels are going up and uh, the uh, follicular stimulating hormone is actually helping those estrogen levels go up, okay? So it's, it's, it's very intricate. It's very scientific. It's very, it's an art, you know, it's, it's all kinds of stuff. Okay. Anyway, so you have this stuff happening. So this is a building phase. That follicular phase is building up to the middle, mid part of your cycle. So we're going to move on to ovulation. So this is mid phase. Um, usually it's textbook. It is day 14 most people do not have a day 14 ovulation if you do congratulations uh, most people are not going to have that simply because everybody's menstrual cycle their whole uh, phase of their cycle is not going to be 28 days or um there she goes there she goes <laughs> um it's not going to be just you know that that um you know cut and dry okay so some people might have ovulation on day 14, uh, 15, 16, 17. Some people might actually notice that they have things happening at day 12, day 13. So we just need to, that's why you need to know your actual fertility signs. That's why you need to know your fertility signs and that's why you need to know the phases of your menstrual cycle, okay? moving on so ovulation phase this is where blood and yin gr gradually fill up um going filling back up filling everything back up um where things uh were had uh, basically washed out you know had been cleansed out so now we're building everything's coming back getting back uh, uh fertilized and nourished and um now it's time to release 
the uh, um the egg or the ovum it's time to release that and it's time to see what's gonna happen if you do participate in um in uh conception activities okay <laughs> so from a hormone perspective the um oh so back up the uh egg the ovum egg is released from the follicle and the corpus luteum develops under the influence of the luteinizing hormone so all of this is saying that this is everything that is holding that um is holding that egg and getting ready to release this is the time where um yeah this is when it releases okay and that's where the luteinizing hormone comes in next we have the uh, the premenstrual phase, which is the phase right before your menstrual cycle happens, if it happens, um, if you are, are not pregnant, okay? It, it won't happen. The menstrual phase won't happen if you're pregnant. We know that, but I, I just want to put that out there. Um, during this uh, luteal phase, this is where um, the energetics um, of the yang John, young chi starts rising and liver chi moves in to prepare for the period um so there like we remember if you've gone back to one of my videos before there's a yin and a yang to everything so the yang side is where um that's where we always tell women to keep things warm and drink warm fluids especially right before the period if it gets too cold the yang energy that warmth that your body needs to help push um the menstrual cycle um to push the menstrual phase and menstrual cycle forward it will halt and if it's too cold, if your body's too cold in like the actual temperature of your womb is too cold, you're gonna have issues with um, heavy bleed, uh, well, sorry, you're gonna have issues with uh, cramping and possibly heavy bleeding and things like that. Things are not the right, in the right condition. So um, that's why we tell women, make sure you're keeping things warm, okay? So, um, when that happens oh and that is why progesterone goes up at this time and if you get pregnant that's when it stays up and that's when you go you know everything is on the up and up and that's what kind of supports everything and, and makes sure everything is in a good uh in a good graces okay good good if you don't get if you're not pregnant progesterone will go up and then it goes down by the time um your actual bleeding comes about this during this time this is the luteal phase and so the corpus luteum grows and secretes progesterone so that was what i was saying like the those things that that um have um all of these intricate pieces they're pushing out hormones here and dropping hormones here so that's why we need every piece of this now um if things are not going the right way then this is when we need to this is when it's it's, it's time for us to come in and we need to start adjusting and and that's why those questions come in i ask a lot of questions about okay well how's um How's your menstrual cycle going or how many days is your menstrual cycle um actually how, how many days do you actually go how many days do you bleed do you have cramps do you have clots what color is it what does it look like is it um does it come out smooth do, is it sticky you know these tell us so many different things that could be um that in in some of those things tell us if certain hormones could possibly be off um even though you know you can look at a lab report to say that too, but we have so many tools on our side. Now, I had a question um, two weeks ago when I did my first uh, um, Happy Friday, uh, Happy Fertility Friday video. Um, someone asked, what if I want to continue to use um, birth control? Well, the answer is the the short answer is basically know your risk and the um, benefits that it is to you and and how long are you planning on using it that's the main thing uh, long-term use of birth control does not do does not help the body um, in the long run 
So that's something you really want to make sure that you're um, aware of. And if you are using it to solely prevent pregnancy and you've never had any issues with your menstrual cycle prior to that, then again, know that there needs to be a time that you need to figure out, okay, when am I going to cut this off? How, you know, how long do I want to be on this? Kind of make a plan for yourself. And, um, because again, there is there are risks to using any type of medication long term. That's just what it is. There are people that there are um, there are people or providers that might say that it's not a problem. But on from a Chinese medicine perspective, we have seen women that do have issues when they do use birth control long term, and they have issues with their cycles returning at all without help and um we've had women have issues getting pregnant and when they do get pregnant they do um have a miscarriage and then we have to kind of help them after that part and and help them build their bodies back up and get everything replenished because long-term birth control can cause um a deficiency or um yeah so it can cause a little bit of a deficiency in the body um, it's so many different things that it, that can pretty much um, occur when you use something like this long term because it is a hormone. It's a hormone thing. So when anything, when any time you have something that is um, intercepting and and managing your hormones, you just have to be careful. And um, so there are studies that show that it can be beneficial to preventing certain cancers. And there are studies that show it can be detrimental to um, causing certain cancers. So you have to know that too. Um, so are you willing to take the, those risks and benefits? So just know what you're doing. That's the main thing. Be aware and know that there are more ways to prevent pregnancy without using hormonal birth control. You can use the fertility awareness method. You can do, of course, condoms. This, people just don't like to use those sometimes. But, um, you know, I, I in, totally understand um, some people feel safer when they use hormonal birth, birth control versus using condoms versus using fertility awareness method and things like that. So do, do what is best for you. But if you ever get to a point to where you want to change things or you want to go to a more natural method and be more uh, in harmony with your own body, know that you do have help and know that there are people that can help you. I am definitely one of those people that are willing to help and um, things like that. So again, um, thank you for tuning in. Please have a wonderful day.